Welcome to Excellent Grades Academy. This is Dr. Bison EM. Welcome to Physiology. Today we're looking at propagation of action potentials in physiology. Let's get into this lesson. So in order for you to understand action potentials, first of all, you must understand what we call membrane potentials. So membrane potentials. So a membrane potential is simply a potential difference. So this is a potential difference. So potential difference. A potential difference is also known as voltage. So this is voltage. That is, so that exists, that exists across the cell membrane, across the cell membrane. Due to the difference, so due to the difference of charged particles. So when we talk about charged particles, we're simply talking about ions. So charged particles, ions, between, between the ICF and the ECF. So when you look at the cell membrane, if this is the cell membrane here, so this is a cell membrane, and I'm going to label it like this. You find that sodium is more outside than the inside of the cell. So there is more sodium, more concentration of sodium outside of the cell, the ECF, than the ICF. And there is less potassium outside of the cell and greater potassium inside of the cell. There is more chloride outside of the cell and there is less chloride inside of the cell. Now, the difference in the concentrations of these charged particles between the ICF and the ECF creates a potential difference across the cell membrane. Okay. So this cell membrane is charged. Now, when you look at the charge of the cell membrane, the inner part of the cell membrane is negatively charged. So it's negatively charged. And the outer part is positively charged. The reason why the charge distribution is like this is because inside of the cells, we've got amino acids. So amino acids, these amino acids are negatively charged. And we also have organic phosphates. So we've got phosphates and phosphates, phosphates are negatively charged. And... So this is the reason why the inside of the cell is negatively charged. And the outside of the cell is positively charged. Why? Because the outside of the cell has got more positively charged species like sodium and potassium. Furthermore, and, and potassium. Furthermore, potassium will be leaving the inside of the cell to go outside, outside of the cell. So because potassium is positively charged, it will contribute to the negative charge that is found in the inner cell membrane and will also contribute to the positive charge that is found in the outer cell membrane. All right. So now these are membrane potentials and that's why there is a potential difference across the cell membrane of every cell. Now let's look at the types of membrane potentials. So types of Membrane potentials. Membrane potentials. So I'm going to talk about three types of membrane potentials. So three types. One is called the resting membrane potential. Resting membrane potential. The resting membrane potential, so this is the membrane potential. This is the Membrane potential when the cell is at rest. Membrane potential when the cell is at rest. What we mean when we say it, the cell is at rest is that the cell is not excited. Meaning there is no stimulus that is acting on the cell. There is no hormone, there is no neurotransmitter that is acting on the receptors of the cell. So this is what we call the resting membrane potential. Different cells have got different membrane potentials. Now, 
our cells of interest in physiology are excitable cells like the nerve cell. So the nerve cell has got a resting membrane potential of negative 70. So negative 70 millivolts. A cardiac muscle cell and a skeletal muscle cell. So cardiac and skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles. Muscle cells have got a resting membrane potential of negative 90 millivolts. What this means is that when you connect uh, a voltmeter or an electrode to the cell membrane, this is the value that is going to be found in the nerve cell and in the skeletal and cardiac muscle cells when they are at rest. Smooth muscle has got a variable resting membrane potential. So the smooth muscle, especially in the GIT, smooth muscle has got a resting membrane potential that is variable from negative 40 millivolts to negative 60 millivolts. And then the SA node, okay, so the SA node, the SA node is found in cardiac muscle, has got a resting membrane potential of about negative 70 millivolts to negative 60 millivolts. So the resting membrane potential of the SA node is variable as well. So that is what the resting membrane potential is. And these values for these uh, tissues and cells that I've put here have a must know. So you must know the resting membrane potential of a nerve cell for cardiac and skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and SA node. Because these are the important cells that we're going to discuss the action potential for. All right. So that is the resting membrane potential. Now, you may ask, what creates the resting membrane potential? Or what is responsible for the resting membrane potential? Okay. So what is responsible? Responsible for maintaining, maintaining the resting membrane potential. So it is what we call the potassium leaky channels. So potassium leaky channels. So the potassium leaky channels are the most implicated for maintaining the resting membrane potentials. Okay, the mostly. And then the other one is the sodium potassium ATPase pump. So ATPase pump. So if there is ever a question in your physiology MCQs that asks you what is responsible for maintaining the resting membrane potential? It's the potassium leaky channels. But the question is, why the potassium leaky channels? It is because the membrane, the cell membrane, is more permeable to potassium than any other ions. The membrane is 50 times more permeable to potassium than to chloride and than to sodium. So that's why potassium leaky channels are responsible for maintaining the the rest of the membrane potential. Okay, now let us also look at other potentials that we call equilibrium potentials. Okay, so equilibrium potentials. Equilibrium potentials. So question is, what are equilibrium potentials? What is an equilibrium potential? So an equilibrium potential, so this is a membrane potential, a membrane potential at which the net transmembrane flux of a particular ion is zero. So at which, at which net Transmit transmembrane, so net transmembrane flux of a particular particular ion is zero because the electro because so this is ha this happens because the electrical gra gradient because the electrical gradient electrical gradient counterbalances 
counterbalances the chemical gradient the chemical gradient so an equilibrium potential is just a membrane potential at which the net transmembrane flux of a particular ion is zero so you must understand that each ion that crosses the membrane the cell membrane has got an equilibrium potential okay so at this potential there is no movement of that ion across the cell membrane so now let's look at the equilibrium potentials for the common ions that we have so the equilibrium potentials equilibrium potentials so for potassium the equilibrium potential so for potassium the equilibrium potential is negative 90 millivolts for sodium the equilibrium potential is positive 60 millivolts for chloride the equilibrium potential is negative 70 millivolts and for calcium the equilibrium potential is positive 130 millivolts now when you combine all these equilibrium potentials you combine them together that's what gives you the resting membrane potential and the resting membrane potential is close to that of potassium because it is the movement of potassium in and out of the cells that determines the resting membrane potential of a cell now you may ask how do you calculate the equilibrium potential of a specific ion how do you calculate calculate the equilibrium potential so ep so how you calculate the equilibrium potential is very simple you just say equilibrium potential is equals to negative 60 log the concentration of an ion intracellular so intracellular concentration of an ion over the concentration of the extracellular concentration extracellular concentration of an ion so now let's look do for example if you want to calculate for potassium you know that the concentration of uh, the concentration of let's calculate for sodium the concentration of sodium inside is 10 so 10 and the concentration of sodium outside is 140 if you do the math here it will give you positive 60 millivolts so that's how this equilibrium potential for sodium is calculated so this is the equilibrium potential for sodium so that is what an equilibrium potential is so we've looked at the rest of the membrane potential and the equilibrium potentials equilibrium potential simply focuses on the equilibrium potential of an ion now let's look at an action potential action potential so what is an action potential this is a cell membrane potential cell membrane potential when the cell is excited so when the cell is excited you have what we call the action potential now you may ask what is excitability excitability is simply the response to a threshold stimulus with a propagated action potential so excitability is just a response to a stimulus that causes the cell to generate an electrical current so that is what an action potential is and that's what we're interested in this video how is an action potential generated so how is an action potential generated how is an action potential generated generated so we're going to look at uh three things okay generated in number one we're going to look at in a nerve in a nerve uh cell b we're going to look at the sa node and three we're going to look at in a uh, cardiac muscle cardiac muscle so you must know that the nerve cell and the muscle the skeletal muscle have got similar action potential caves propagation caves all right
similar action potential propagation curves. All right, so now let's explain this. How is an action potential propagated in a nerve cell? So propagation of an action potential. Propagation of an action potential. In a nerve. Okay, so in a nerve. So this is our curve, is our graph for an action potential. Okay, so this is our graph for an action potential. And the resting membrane potential is here. For a nerve cell is negative 70 millivolts. So this at this potential, so this is what we call the resting membrane potential. At this potential, the action put the, the membrane potent the membrane potential of a nerve cell is at rest, negative 70. Now, what will happen is that when the cell is at rest, a stimulus is going to stimulate. It is going to excite this cell. When the stimulus excites this cell, it is going to start raising this membrane potential. So negative 70 will start becoming more positive. So the process of making the act, the nerve potential, the membrane potential to be more positive is what we call depolarization. So a stimulus will come and it will start raising the membrane potential like this. Now question is, why does the membrane potential become less negative? It is because the stimulus causes ligand-gated sodium channels to open. So the stimulus will cause ligand-gated sodium channels to open. So when ligand-gated sodium channels open, they are going to make sodium, which is positively charged, to start entering the cell. When sodium that is positively charged enters the cell, the inside of the cell becomes less negative. So it will be a little bit more positive. When that stimulus makes the membrane potential to reach negative 55 millivolts, then an action potential is going to be propagated. So in a nerve cell, negative 55 is what we call the threshold potential. So this is called the threshold potential. The threshold potential is the potential at which an action potential is propagated. So at the threshold potential here, what happens is that voltage-gated sodium channels open. At the threshold potential, voltage-gated sodium channels open. When the voltage-gated sodium channels open, they are quite numerous. There are many, and they are fast opening. When they open, this membrane potential is going to shift from negative 55 to about positive 40, to about positive 40 millivolts. These voltage-gated sodium channels only open for less than a millisecond. So when they open for less than a millisecond, they will close and they will make the membrane potential to shift from negative 55 to about positive 40 millivolts. About positive 40 millivolts here, voltage-gated potassium channels open. So voltage-gated potassium channels. Potassium channels open. When the voltage-gated potassium channels open, they will cause potassium to move out of the cell very fast. So the cell membrane potential is going to become more, is going to go back to its negative form. Why? Because potassium is positively charged. And when positive charge is leaving the cell, the cell membrane becomes more negative. That's why the cell membrane is going back to its uh, negative uh, resting membrane potential. Okay, so this period here, this period when the cell membrane potential is changing from negative to positive by the entrance of sodium is called depolarization. You are removing the polarity of the cell. You are making it more positive. And this period where the cell membrane potential is going back to its original uh, charge, this is called repolarization. So repolarization. So just know that repolarization is the movement of sodium ions outside of the cell. And repolarization rather is the movement of potassium ions outside of the cell. And depolarization is the movement of sodium ions inside of the cell. Okay? So now the movement of sodium ions 
here makes the cell membrane to overshoot. So it will go even below, even below its resting membrane potential to about negative 90 millivolts here. So this period where the cell membrane potential goes more negative than its resting membrane potential is what you call hyperpolarization. It's hyperpolarization. This hyperpolarization is going to be corrected and the cell membrane potential will go back to negative 70 here by the sodium potassium ATPase pump. So ATPase pump. Okay. This period here, when the cell membrane potential is going back to its resting membrane potential from hyperpolarization. This is called the relative refractory period. So relative refractory period. Relative refractory period. Okay. So during the relative refractory period, weak stimulus cannot cause the cell to have an action potential. But very strong stimulus will still propagate an action potential in that cell. Alright, so that is how an action potential is propagated in an F cell. This period, when there is depolarization and repolarization, in this period, there is what we call absolute refractory period. So absolute refractory period. Refractory period. During the absolute refractory period, no stimulus, no matter how strong it is, can cause the cell to have an action potential. So this period is when there is depolarization and there is repolarization. But the, the period where there is hyperpolarization to going back to the resting membrane potential is the, re the relative refractory period. Okay? Relative refractory periods. So relay. Relative, supposed to be relative. There was an error in the spelling, spelling there. Relative refractory period. Okay, so a quick recap before we move on to the essay note. So the resting membrane potential for an F cell is negative 70 millivolts. A stimulus will come and it will open ligand gated sodium channels, and if it is strong enough, it is going to cause the membrane potential to reach the threshold potential. The threshold potential is the potential at which an action potential is propagated. If the threshold potential is not reached, an action potential can't be propagated. That's what we call the all or none principle. So the all or none principle just states that a threshold potential has to be reached in order for an action potential to be propagated. If a threshold potential is not reached, then an action potential can't be propagated. Okay, so when the threshold potential is reached, at the threshold potential, voltage-gated sodium channels open for just less than 1 milliseconds and it will shoot the membrane potential from negative 55 to positive 40. This period when the membrane potential is becoming more positive is called depolarization. When the membrane potential reaches positive 40 millivolts, Voltage-gated potassium channels are going to open and potassium, which is positively charged, is going to move out of the cell. Now, this will cause the membrane potential to go back to be negative. This period is what we call repolarization. Okay? And when the cell membrane potential becomes more negative than the rest of the membrane potential, that is called hyperpolarization. And the channel that is going to bring back the membrane potential to its resting membrane potential from hyperpolarization is the sodium potassium ATPase pump. This period when the membrane potential is being brought back to its resting membrane potential from hyperpolarization is the relative refractory period. The relative refractory period is a period where weak stimulus cannot propagate an action potential, but very st strong stimulus can propagate an action potential. So this is how an action potential is propagated in a nerve cell. Now let's look at the curve in an SA node. Okay. So propagation, propagation of an action potential in 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 SA node. So the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. Okay. So SA node, SA node is the pacemaker. 
pacemaker of the heart. What this simply means is that it sets the tempo at which the electrical activity in the heart is generated. So we said that the resting membrane potential for SA0 is about negative 60 millivolts. Okay. So there is spontaneous depolarization in the SA0. You don't need a stimulus. It will just depolarize on its own. So it will go depolarize. When it depolarizes and it reaches about positive 40 millivolts, an action potential will be generated. So positive, negative rather. Negative 40 millivolts in the SA node, this is the threshold potential. This is the potential at which an action potential is generated. Okay. So here, voltage-gated sodium channels open and it will shoot to about positive 20 millivolts. Okay. And when it reaches positive 20, other literature say positive 10. Here, voltage-gated potassium channels open. So here, voltage gated potassium channels open voltage gated potassium channels open when the voltage gated potassium channels open the membrane potential goes back to its resting membrane potential so this period here is called depolarization this is where the resting membrane potential is becoming more positive and this period where the rest the, mem the potential is going back to its resting membrane potential is what we call Repolarization. So always remember this. Repolarization is movement of potassium out of the cell. So movement of potassium out of cell is repolarization. Wireless depolarization is the movement of sodium inside of the cell. Okay. So that is how an action potential is propagated. Okay. Is propagated in the SA node. Now let's look at propagation of an action potential in a cardiac muscle. Then we'll be done with this video. Propagation of an action potential in a cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle. So the cardiac muscle action potential is a little bit different. Okay, so the curve is like this. So this is the curve here. Okay. So the rest of the membrane potential for a cardiac muscle is negative 90 millivolts. And then there is time this side in milliseconds. Okay. So the cardiac muscle will be at rest at uh, negative 90. And then an electrical stimulus from the SA node will come and will stimulate this cardiac muscle. And then the, the membrane potential will start rising. And when it reaches negative 70 millivolts, negative 70 is the threshold potential. So the threshold potential in a cardiac muscle is negative 70. Okay. So at negative 70, an action potential will be generated. So it will be generated. And then it will reach about positive 20 millivolts. At positive 20 millivolts, Potassium channels will open, so the membrane potential will start going down. But when it reaches positive 10 millivolts, calcium, calcium that is stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the cardiac muscle is going to be released. So it is going to balance. So it is going to balance the, the membrane potential. So there's going to be a plateau. So this is what we call a plateau phase. So plat plateau phase. I hope that's the correct spelling. Spelling plateau phase because of calcium release from sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, when calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, potassium channels are going to open, and then there is going to be repolarization. Okay, so repolarization, and then the membrane potential will be taken back to its resting membrane potential. So this portion here, this is phase zero. So this is depolarization. So phase zero is depolarization. Depolarization. And then this one here is phase one. Phase one, this is phase two, this is phase three. 
and then this is phase four. So in phase zero, there's depolarization. Where? So phase zero here. Phase zero. So, so there is movement of movement of sodium in cell. And then phase one. Phase one is movement of potassium out of cell. And then phase two, the plateau phase. So phase two is the plus two phase. This is release of calcium. Release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum. Phase three is movement. So this is movement of potassium out of cell by opening of the first opening potassium channels and then phase four phase four is rest in membrane potential so this is how an action potential is generated in a cardiac muscle so the electrical impulse from the SA node will stimulate the cardiac muscle it will open the sodium channels and then when it reaches negative 70 millivolts which is the threshold potential in a cardiac uh, muscle the voltage gated sodium channels are going to open and a lot of sodium are going to influx the cell and will make the membrane potential to reach positive 20 millivolts at positive 20 millivolts potassium is going to start moving out of the cell and then when it reaches positive 10, there's going to be a, a release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle. So there's going to be a plateau phase here, meaning that the membrane potential won't be changing. Okay. But after a while, calcium will stop being released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and potassium channels are going to open. So there's going to be potassium efflux or rather the movement of potassium out of the cell. So there's going to be a repolarization. So this is repolarization, repolarization, because there is movement of potassium outside of the cell, and the membrane potential is going to be taken back to its resting membrane potential. So that's how an action potential is propagated in a cardiac muscle. All right. So we've talked about nerve muscle, nerve uh, action potential curve, SA node action potential curve, cardiac action potential curve, and always know that skeletal muscle and the the curve for a nerve cell are the cell are the same but the values for the resting membrane potential and the threshold potentials are different they are different okay common exam question common exam question on this so common exam questions at unza for this is outline outline the difference outline the difference in the action potentials so in the action potential potential propagation propagation between a skeletal muscle skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle so cardiac muscle so you're supposed to know the differences in a cardiac muscle there's a plateau phase in the skeletal muscle there's no plateau phase okay and there's release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum in the cardiac muscle there is no release of skeletal muscle there's no the release of calcium in skeletal muscle so all of these things you must know all right, in the next, next video, we're going to look at synaptic transmission across a neuromuscular junction. I'll see you in the next video.